My iPad has been through a lot. It's my first ever cracked screen in all my years of owning a device. And that just means that I've picked it up so many times and then dropped it a couple times too. It's my number one productivity tool and I've been using it daily since I got it two years ago. I pick it up more often than I pick up my phone. I know, crazy, right? I actually don't use my phone that much. I currently use an iPad Pro, third generation, 11 inch. And for a while, it was my only Apple device. And most of the time that I spend on it is work related. Most is the keyword here. The pen, the pen is absolutely crucial for what I use it for. And I opted to use it without an official keyboard. I tried that, it didn't really work for me. Not worth it, way too expensive for a keyboard, by the way. It's easy enough just to connect any Bluetooth keyboard to it. Lately, I've been using this. It's a gamer keyboard. It's not exactly the Apple aesthetic, but it is super ergonomically low profile. They're available in white. I just didn't know that when I got it. In fact, I wrote a lot of the script using this keyboard and my iPad on the dining room table because I don't want to be at my PC all the time, you know? And here are all of the ways that I use my iPad to support my work as a content creator and some of the newer things I want to use it for in 2023. The number one app that I open on my iPad right now is the Penbook. When I purchased Penbook, it was $20 for a lifetime Penbook premium. And it looks like now it's only available in a yearly subscription format and premium is 15 and pro is 20. Really not sure what the difference is here. I'm not a fan of the subscription model and I'm not sure if it's worth it anymore compared to other apps that are still allowing you to get a lifetime subscription for like 10 bucks. That's way better. So this app lets me save all my random notes in the same place. No more sticky notes on my monitor, on the walls, random notes in journals that I lose track of. Although I still do that sometimes. Writing is just too fun for me to ever replace it fully with digital paper. But I also use Penbook as a digital planner, but I supplement it with Google Calendar too, especially for recurring deadlines. You know, I can't remember those birthdays. Google Calendar's got your back. Later on, I'll be talking about a new app I've been using for digital planning. There are a billion uh, colors and different pens and notebooks and papers you can play with and try it out and see what works for you. I really like that they have pre-made books uh, and templates so you can just, you know, start a 2023 planner and boom, that's it. It's a really easy way to plan each year, month, and day if you're into that. I have notebooks for random ideas, lists of to-dos, lists of things I need to film, deadlines, brainstorming, etc. It basically is a replacement for paper and the best part is it's all in one place. If this was real paper, it would be a stack of lined paper, white paper, grid paper, sticky notes, just a mess really. It is possible to use penbook as a journal or a diary and I did that for a bit but I just prefer journaling with actual pen and paper. There's just something about it, especially with my fountain pen. Mm. So satisfying. Here are some of the ways that Penbook has been really useful for me though. I've been using it for a couple years. For video topics, I'll come up with a bunch of ideas as I'm watching YouTube, reading books, doing whatever. And eventually it becomes a script. More complicated videos, I'll storyboard via boxes for important events or do mind maps. I've tracked habits using their habit tracker pages, but my favorite pages are the planners and the dot grids. They're simple, they're practical for any purpose, and you don't have to change papers up too often, which is a lot of work for me. They're all always updating this app with new features, including different interfaces and new notebooks to try out. I know there are a bunch of other journal apps or notepad apps for iPads, so I might give those a try too, but know whatever works for you, right? The second app I really love for iPad and use a bunch is the Kindle. I've read a lot of books on this iPad. I've separated my reading to a Kindle Paperwhite recently because my iPad was getting too heavy for how much reading I was doing. This thing's super lightweight, super easy, but the Kindle app on the iPad is still way better. For one, there's color. This is black and white. And you can browse Kindle Unlimited and Prime reading so much faster and check out instantly or return books instantly. On a Kindle Paperwhite, everything is slow and clunky. It's really good for reading once you're in a book you have it downloaded and uh, all you have to do is press on and off and turn page but all the other features are really slow on an iPad it's streamlined it's smart you get to see your reading streaks your library borrowed books etc and it's fast and again there's color it's so much more vibrant you can change the color of the font 
and the pages and I settled on a yellowish page color for my reading experience. Here's what my Kindle app looks like. I'm always reading stuff here and there. So there's a lot of downloaded books right now. I know it looks cluttered. Lately, I've been borrowing eBooks from the library, which I can do on Chrome and then transfer over to Kindle for reading. It's super convenient to be able to do that all in one device. With a Kindle, you gotta go to your PC, check out, send to Kindle, download, then read. It's a lot of steps. My next most used app is Evernote. It's where I write down scripts, ideas, and cleanly organize my thoughts as it's being sorted out and brainstormed in my pen book. I have different notebooks for different areas, like for this channel, other channel, for 2023, and the archive, where finished things go to die. I mean rest. I try to keep it a lot more organized, only keeping things that matter, that are useful to me within that week or month. And it's really nice that this app syncs with my desktop version of Evernote too, so I can pick up where I left off after everything syncs up. Writing scripts is easier than ever. And when I'm done with that video, it goes to the archive. I used to do this on Google Docs, but organizing the docs, you know, never really happened. And then I tried it on Notion, but Notion has way too many features and it was more distracting than productive at times. Evernote pretty much only lets me write notes. Um, I mean, I can collect images and embed videos and make lists, but overall, the primary purpose is writing. Another really useful app for content creation is Photoshop and pretty much the entire suite of Adobe tools. I primarily edit the photos on my computer and then I transfer it to my iPad to draw little notes, add a personalized touch, uh, don't, you know, those touches that are really hard to do with mouse and keyboard. I just draw on it. It's super fun instead of using pre-made fonts and I'll just write it or draw in and it's ugly sometimes, but it's mine. Then I can export it right there on my iPad or go back to PC and make more edits before exporting and uploading onto YouTube. I guess I really should try doing even more Photoshop projects like making graphics for Instagram or other things like that. The potential really is endless, especially with the Apple Pen. This is not an advertisement. I love my Apple Pen. Now a must have app for content creators who make a lot of videos like this, where you sit down and talk is a teleprompter app. I use Prompt Smart Pro. It's a $20 app and anytime I need to say a lot, I'll transfer it to this app, especially like brand deals where they want more specific talking points in a specific amount of time and you need to talk really fast. I can download scripts directly from Google Drive and boom, it's pretty much ready to go. I can also copy scripts from Evernote and put it on here. It lets me change the scrolling speed. It gives me space to add in personal additions and stories. I have no idea how I made it before I had a teleprompter. I rambled a lot. I did ton of takes. I did one sentence at a time, but now the process is so much more streamlined and it sounds more natural because I wrote it. And of course, there's Google Calendar. You can never ditch Google Calendar. Google Calendar is how I keep track of important deadlines or events that happen throughout the week or year or recurring things or meetings, whatever. As you you can see, I'm one of those people that offload pretty much everything from my brain to paper, digital or not. It relieves a lot of stress from my day when I know that I no longer have to keep that piece of information or deadline in my head. I don't even need to stick to my calendar or agenda or whatever. As long as I know I'm not forgetting the important things, I'm good. I'm chill. I always turn off notifications on my calendar though. I just check it once a day, see what's in store for the day, and do a quick glance over for the rest of the week to make sure if I need to prep for something or not go to the store, pick up something, who knows. The best thing about having an iPad be my productivity tool is I don't associate it with the same habits as my phone or PC. I don't ever do mindless scrolling on my iPad because there aren't any social media apps on there. In my mind, it's a dedicated work device, but I also have a little bit of fun on it too. But it's super handy if I only wanna take my iPad into the office instead of my phone and PC. And you can't forget the games. I mainly just have TFT, Team Fight Tech, it's a nice game to play here and there with my husband when we're taking a break from work. Now for the apps that I want to use more in 2023. Notion and GoodNotes. I've heard GoodNotes is like the best notebook app there could possibly be on the Apple Store, I think. Since I haven't tried them all, I think this is the year that I try GoodNotes. I've seen a lot of fancy digital planning templates, videos, plan with me, all that good stuff that you can like buy and then use GoodNotes to edit. So that could be really cool too. It's hard to say where the year will take this app, but I think it's nice. I downloaded a free digital planning template to use for 2023 and so far, 
far. I've been loving it. I've been just enjoying it so much. It's very pretty, but I'll link that down below if you want to give it a try. I thought it would be super lame to use a template, but the nice aesthetic actually makes me want to use it more than just like a built-in planner page does. It's aesthetic, I don't know. I like it. I also started using Notion more to track books I read or recipes, and uh, I tried uh, making like a aesthetic notion thing. I don't know what I want yet, so I just downloaded a template and I'm gonna edit it to suit my needs and figure out everything this year. I'm just gonna fine tune thing and things and see if notion has a place to stay in my life or not. So here's what my iPad looks like right now. I haven't put too much thought into the layout. I hide a lot of the unused Apple apps and folders, but I'm really surprised how useful the iPad can be and how I don't have to be sitting at my computer all the time to get work done. Being on the go is just nice. Sitting on the couch is nice. Sitting on this couch, laying down. Having the large icons was a big game changer though. I just like the way it looks a lot. And here's to a wonderfully healthy and productive 2023.